They call it spy baiting, the technique of silent capture. Its origin or exact origin is unknown, but they say that it's come out of two different places in Japan, one place being Lake Biwa, and the other is the region of Tokyo and some of the small waters there. It's very interesting the way that spy baiting actually evolved. It was a bunch of anglers out on like Lake Biwa that were literally buying the props and putting them on lures from jerk baits to crank baits. And they literally took this process and continued to refine it until they got down to what they call a spy bait. As the craze started to refine itself, several companies came forth um, taking this a step further. Engine, Timoco, Hemkel, Evergreen, and Dual Realis all created spy baits, but Dual Realis took their spy bait a step further and designed it for the tournament angler. In Japan, the spy baiting gear used can exceed $1,000. Some of these guys are using $500, $600 rods and $500, $600 reels but you really don't need that to execute this technique. You are gonna need a very good um, drop shot rod, one that is probably medium action that loads very nicely. This is an ultra finesse technique, so line weight is critical. You're gonna want fluorocarbon between four pound and eight pound test. The best reel for this technique is the 1000 to 2500 series. This is one that carries the right capacity for the fluorocarbon and will help you in your cast. The technique, although it seems relatively simple, requires a tremendous amount of concentration. You're making a long cast, but then you're going to count that bait down until you get to the preferred depth. At that point, you're going to trace that contour. The idea here is actually to retrieve this lure extremely slow. The lure is going to do all the work for you, but your concentration is going to be in keeping that lure in a straight line and moving it along very slowly. Your retrieve is almost so slow that you'll be frustrated with it. The idea though is to incorporate the line on an even medium retrieve or a slow retrieve until you get a pickup. Professional anglers have quickly caught on to spy baiting and are using it successfully in professional tournaments. The key though is looking at the conditions that this bait is going to perform um, at its best. Ideally, clear water situations are great for spy baiting. You also want to look at stable conditions, believe it or not. If you have falling temperatures, that tends to trigger the fish's metabolism. And this is a linear traveling bait. So the fish are going to have to follow this bait or the bait's going to have to enter their zone. You'll find that spy baiting is being used or fished nationally. But there are some key places or locations to fish this bait. Looking at rock humps are a great place. Concentrating on ledges, ends of points, drop-offs, bluff ends, these are great places where fish suspend, where the spy bait is going to be most effective. Dual Realis has taken some extra steps in this game. Their concentration on creating this lure for the tournament angler has been vital and important. Dual Realis has incorporated two props. They're very, very small in comparison to the other props that are on some of the spy baits. The props work in unison, causing turbulence that runs along the body line of the bait. This turbulence is also called plume effect. It trails out the back of the bait, which actually stimulates the fish. Not only does the spin bait do this, but it also does what we call listing, which causes the bait to alternate from side to side. This gives a little bit of reflection, causing the bait to look like it's moving or swimming, like a natural bait fish. Stop the retrieve, and this bait will actually shimmy, again, causing another feeding response out of the fish. Putting these aspects together is the reason why Dual Realis has been so successful with the tournament angler on spy bait.